and thank God for everything that he has done for us. This morning we are reading Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 we are reading verse 1, just one verse. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. That's a scripture that is so common that uh, virtually everybody can say what it is and it's casually said. To everything there is a season, there's a time for everything under the sun, and all of that, we say that easily. Yes, that's true. And but when we say that, we say it in the context of time is passing by. The time has passed already. Who holds time? Who calculates time? Who knows what season it is? Who knows what purpose it is going to serve at a particular time except God? Sarah was there 89 years, she never had a child. And she even confessed her time had passed. That is human confession. But is that what God said? No, God didn't say her time had passed. It was not yet time for Sarah. But the thing is, sometimes we try to give, explain away what God has done. It's very easy to say, Sarah didn't, have, didn't need to have another child because she was going to have a special child. Oh, correct. How about Mary? She had more than a special child, Jesus. She still gave birth to other children. You know the ways of God are past finding out. Don't try to explain away God. It won't help. But just understand that when it gets to the issues of things happening, God controls the time by himself. And he has a different way of calculating time. You know what it says in uh, Peter? It says, you take a thousand days and God will take it as a day. And you take a day, God takes it as a thousand days. I mean, God has his own way. That's what Peter was saying. That our own idea of things are entirely different from God's own idea. So don't think that time has passed simply because by your calculation, that's not what should be. Or all of the other things have happened in such a way that you think that the other thing cannot happen again. You say it's no more time. Especially when it gets to the issues of marriage or childbirth or achievements in life. We are portion times and limits. And we calculate life by those times and limits. And they lead to anxiety, to anguish, to all manner of things. And people tear themselves to pieces just to meet up whatever they call time. Whose time are you talking about? You say, yes, there is a time for everything under the sun, but which time? You know, you, you try to go against God. It's like what the scripture says, kicking against the goods, G-O-A-D-S. You try to do the thing that you shouldn't do. You want to tear yourself to pieces. You want to achieve a particular thing on a particular day. Well, in the end, you achieve nothing. In the end, you get nothing out of all of your so-called effort. And in fact, it was no effort. It was a waste. There is a time, but that time is controlled by God. There is somewhere we try to get things done and we want to force the situation to be. We are looking for what is not even our own. You know, we arrive at this story of permissive will. You've made so much noise until God says, okay, go ahead. It started from Abraham. Because Sarah had said time had passed and there was nothing anybody could do again, Abraham had to sleep with his mate. He had Ishmael. We have not come out of the trouble till today. There is this permanent war between the house of Isaac and the house of Ishmael up till now. One aspect of permissive will. No wonder the scripture says when it gets to permissive will, it says it gave them the desires of their heart and added leanness to their soul. Why do you want the leanness? Wait for God. You think time has passed? It has not. You know, recently in Nigeria, a 68-year-old woman or 69 gave birth to twins. And there has been so much talk about being IVF kind of birth and all of that. 
I agree with everybody who says it. But I would like to know the examples of 68, 69 of that technology that succeeded. And you will find that that thing is next to zero. What am I saying in effect? God still controlled it because it had his own time stamp on it. There is time for that thing that you are looking for. It may not be today. But in all of us, we behave virtually in the same way. We want everything yesterday. What do I mean by that? Whereas you are asking for it now, you expect it to have happened before you finish asking. It does not always follow. God won't give you a thing because you, need, you think you need it. God won't give you a thing because you think you are desperate for it. He will give you in his own time. You know what the scripture says? God makes everything beautiful in his own time. Until he's ready to make it beautiful, it's not going to happen. Sarah, yes, she waited, finally gave her housemate to the husband. He impregnated her, gave birth to a child 13 years later before Sarah would give birth to her own. And can you imagine? 13 years earlier, she did not even think she could have a child again. Then 13 years later, she was nursing a child. Because it was God's time. And that one that came in God's time became the treasure of this whole world. Whatever comes out of God's time is not going to give you the pleasantness and the joy and the peace you should have. So don't look for it. Let's learn to wait for God's time. There is a time for that thing that you are looking for. There is a proper season for it. And when it does come, the joy of God shall lighten up your life. Don't force the situation. Don't look for the permissive will. God will reach you in his own time. Father, everything you make beautiful in your time. Make things beautiful for all of us, your sons and daughters. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.